This presentation is on the works of Benjamin Franklin. Poor Richard's Almanac Poor Richard's Almanac was a yearly published calendar filled with advertisements, weather forecasts, recipes, jokes, and proverbs that Benjamin Franklin published from 1732 to 1759 under the pseudonym Richard Saunders. Fictional news stories were published in serial form in the almanac, meaning they would continue from year to year, aiding in sales of the almanac as readers wanted to find out what happened to the characters in these news stories from year to year. The almanac was enormously popular and became one of the most influential publications in American history. Its numerous maxims or proverbs promote the virtues of hard work, thrift, and success, which have led to both praise of Franklin as a patron of businessmen and bankers and the promoter of self-reliant American individualisms, as well as criticism of him as a shallow philosopher and simplified promoter of the rags-to-riches myth and the excesses of capitalism. Benjamin Franklin's Epitaph Franklin wrote his epitaph, a statement written in memory of a person who has died, used as an inscription on a tombstone, at age 22, but it was not actually used as his epitaph when he died. His actual tombstone only included his and his wife's names and his death date. Although Franklin ended up becoming much more than a printer, at this stage in his career he had only become a printer, thus the epitaph doesn't say he was a scientist, statesman, philanthropist, diplomat, or any of the other professions he ended up holding throughout his life. His epitaph compares himself to, in an extended metaphor to a book which decays in death and then becomes transformed into a revised and more perfect edition corrected by the author, who could be himself or God. The epitaph suggests that Franklin either believed in reincarnation or life after death in heaven. An address to the public. Franklin writes his, this address as president of the Pennsylvania Society for promoting the abolition of slavery and the relief of free Negroes unlawfully held in bondage. This public address is a clear abolitionist tract criticizing slavery and calling for the end of slavery and assistance in the adjustment of emancipated black people into regular American society. It shows without a doubt that Franklin believed that slaves are human beings who should be treated as such and in an example of the public service work Franklin did for his community throughout his adult life. Who is Silence Do Good? Silence Do Good is the pseudonym 16-year-old Benjamin Franklin uses for the 14 essays in letter form that are published in the New England, New England Current, the newspaper his brother was editor of in Boston. Since Benjamin Franklin's attempts to be published in the newspaper kept being rejected, he devised the pseudonym and left the letters under the door of the newspaper office written in disguised handwriting. His brother loved the letters and published 14 of them before Benjamin Franklin confessed to being the author. When his brother realized who Silence Duguid actually was, he was very angry and called Benjamin vain and beat him. Benjamin Franklin ended up running off from his apprenticeship with his brother in Boston to live in Philadelphia. The fictitious Silence Duguid is a middle-aged widow of a country minister. She claims to be an enemy to vice and a friend to virtue. She loved the, cl loved the clergy and good men, but was the moral mortal enemy to arbitrary government and unlimited power. She was also known to observe and reprove the faults of others. The Old Mistress's Apology This argumentative essay, in the form of a letter from an old mistress to an unknown younger man, argues that men should paradoxically seek older women to marry rather than younger women. This letter was considered too indecent to be published during Franklin's lifetime, and for quite a few years after, so it was not published until the mid-20th century. It is an example of Franklin's down-to-earth and even bawdy early humor, and is in sharp contrast with, to the type of writing his Puritan ancestors would have written. The letter is meant to be satirical and humorous. In the letter, the old mistress gives eight reasons why men would be better off marrying older women rather than younger women, and appeals to the reader's sense of logic. The style is simple, clear, and humorous. 